We're starting chapter 8 tonight, uh, which is about linear regression, and we're going to start with an example. So our example deals with fat versus protein for different items on Burger King's menu. So looking at the scatter plot, we have protein measured in grams on the x-axis and fat measured in grams on the y-axis. Both have units, so we know they're quantitative data. We can try and describe the association here and say that it is linear and positive with moderate strength, um, but it doesn't tell us a whole lot. So we can calculate the correlation coefficient, which may tell us more. Um, in this case, the correlation coefficient r ended up being 0.38. So it says that there seems to be a linear association. It would be positive because it's a positive, and it's moderate because it's only about 0.83, but it doesn't really tell us what that association is or what that really means. So what we want is we want a model to, that can say more about the linear relationship between our two variables. So in math, a model is often a graph or a table or a diagram or an equation, um, and in this case, our model is going to be an equation. Our, a model is going to simplify reality to help us understand underlying patterns and relationships. So the linear model is what we're going to be using. The linear model is an equation of a straight line through a set of data. So again, it's an equation of a line. Um, and that line and equation is used to predict one variable from another. So we'll really use x to predict y um, in our situation. However, it's just a model, so it's not going to be perfect, uh, and it may not hit any of the points, um, but it should be close to most of them. We want our line to go through the center of the data, so we want it to be in the center so it has points even on both sides, and really this is going to end up being the line of best fit. Um, and this line of best fit will pass through the mean point, and there should be a bar above the x and y, so I'm going to draw that in, so it should be x bar and y bar. That would be the mean point. So with a model we're going to have what are called residuals. A residual is the distance between the predicted value and the true value in the y direction, so in the vertical direction only. And we expect there to be some minor discrepancies between the line and the points, because again, the model is not going to be perfect. Um, but we will be more concerned with large gaps. So when we're calculating residuals, we need a predicted value and an actual value. The predicted value is y with a little hat on it, and it's called y hat, and it comes from the linear model. So you use your x value to find your predicted value. Then the actual value is your y value from the data. So again, your actual value and your predicted value come from the same x value. But the residual will be calculated as your actual y value minus your predicted y value. So for example, if y is 25 and y hat is 36, your residual is 25 minus 36, which is negative 11 and therefore you would end up being 11 units under the line. So a negative residual tells you you're under the line, and a positive residual will tell you you are above the line. So continuing to look at residuals, a negative residual means the predicted value's too big, so it's an overestimate because your data value is below the line. A positive residual means that the predicted value is too small. It's an underestimate because your data value is above the line. So in the figure, we're looking at the estimated fat for the Burger King broiler chicken sandwich, which is 36 grams of fat, where the true fat is 25 grams. So the residual, again, ends up being 25 minus 36, or negative 11. And that's what we see right here. So this black line shows our residual. Our predicted value comes from our line, which is the red line, and our y value um, is just our from our actual data point. 
and then the distance in between those two points is your residual. So how do we find the right line? This is where it gets a little tricky. So the line of best fit is going to be the right line. And yes, I'm very excited about that, which is why we have four exclamation points. So the residuals tell us how far we are from the line. So it tells us how far each data value is from the line. Some residuals are going to be positive because they are um, our data values are above the line, and others are going to be negative because our data values are below the line. And on average, they end up canceling each other out. However, we don't really like when things cancel out because then we can't assess how well um, they fit by just adding up all of the all of the values. So we won't be able to determine how well the line of best fit actually works by adding the residuals up if they cancel each other out. So what we end up doing is we end up squaring our residual values. By squaring our residual values, we end up with only positive values. And then we're able to determine that the smaller the sum, the better the fit. So we are looking for the smallest sum of our squared residuals. So the line of best fit then is the line for which the sum of the squared residuals is smallest, which we also call the least squares line. We're going to talk more about this in class. Um, we're going to watch a video and discuss it. Um, so we will be able to kind of work this out a little bit better in class. But again, this is important, so I want to emphasize this. The line of best fit will always pass through the mean point. Again, there's no bars, so there should be x bar for the mean for the x's, y bar the mean for the y's. So that point will always be on the line. So standardized data. So correlation is derived from standardized data. That's how we calculated our correlation coefficient. If you remember from the video from the previous night, um, we had the scatter plot where we had the standardized values and we had the same scale and it allowed us to see the relationship a little bit better. Um, we can apply that same relationship when we are calculating the line of best fit. So if a line of best fit is applied to a standardized plot, it'll go through the origin. So the y-intercept will end up being zero. So we end up with an equation y equals mx, where m is our slope. Applying this to our data, when the slope is determined for standardized data, it ends up being the correlation coefficient. So we end up with our z-score for our y-values equals r, because r is now our slope, times the z-score for our x-values. Um, and this gives us still a linear equation, but it's a linear equation based off of standardized values. So what does this really tell us? Like, what does this really mean? Um, so using this equation, where r is our slope and also our correlation coefficient, um, it tells us that if we move one standard deviation from the mean in the x direction, so if this, is one, if this z score is 1, we're going to multiply 1 by r, and we end up with just r. That would mean that our z score for our y direction would end up equaling our correlation coefficient, or r. So again, it tells us that moving one standard deviation from the mean in the x direction will move r standard deviations from the mean in the y direction. Therefore, if r is 0, there's no linear association, because we would multiply the z-score in our x direction by 0, so y would equal 0. It wouldn't work. But if r is 1 or negative 1, then it's perfectly linear, because we end up with the z-score for our y-values equaling the z-score for our x-values, and it'll end up being a perfectly linear line. Again, the biggest purpose for this is that it allows us, gives us a way to end up calculating our slope and y-intercept using our correlation coefficient, using our regression line in real units instead of standardized units, because we're going to be working in real units, not standardized units. So don't worry, you won't have to create scatter plots in standardized units. We'll only use our real units. We like linear lines to be in slope-intercept form, which 
Until now, we have known as y equals mx plus b, where m is our slope and b is our y-intercept. Unfortunately, in statistics, we use a slightly different notation. So we use y hat for our predicted y value, b equals b sub 0, which is our y-intercept, plus b sub 1 times x. So b sub 1 would be our slope. Again, b sub 1 is a slope, which tells us how rapidly changes with respect to x occur. And b sub 0 is our y-intercept, which tells us where the line crosses or intercepts the y-axis. b sub 0 is a starting point and is oftentimes going to be useless. It's just there to make the, the model fit our data. Um, but b sub 1, our slope, is extremely important. Um, that's all we have for today. We will end up investigating more um, with our linear model um, in the videos to come. But again, tomorrow in class we're going to focus more on uh, residuals and how we calculate our line of best fit. Alright, have a good night. I'll see you guys tomorrow.